Okay, so a fellow YouTuber had uh, requested that I show uh, everybody how uh, I built my uh, horizontal uh, bifold uh, garage doors. So uh, I'll show you them uh, opening, closing, and then give you some details on uh, on what I did to uh, make them. There you go. That's the doors opening and closing, or closing and opening. Um, you'll notice that uh, at the end, I uh, pull the doors closed that last little bit, and then I've got actually uh, bolts uh, to latch it on either side. A um, couple of things about the construction here. Now I'll uh, I'll drop it down a bit, and then we can uh, have a better look at it. Okay, so here's the doors closed. Uh, I couldn't leave them part way open because uh, there was just too much ambient light. So all it is is basically two frames of uh, one by three uh, tubing. It's about I think it's between 83 thou and 100 thou wall, and uh, the uh, doors are connected in the middle with just standard garage door hinges that I picked up from Home Depot. They're attached at the, uh, or they are closed and locked with uh, bolts into the frame on either end. That one I haven't latched. And uh, there's also a hinge at the top. I'll go outside and I'll show you that. It's a little hard to see, but you can see the hinges along the length here, hopefully. Uh, one hinge for every uh, support that I had along here. Um, nothing magical here. These are just the same old garage doors. I've got, I believe it's five inch uh, by five eight slag bolts going through up into them. Uh, I did have to drill out the holes on each of the hinges just to enlarge them a bit. I made a little uh, jig and template to do that. Um, so we'll go over what's important to uh, do before you actually build your doors. Now the most important thing is obviously to uh, frame your door very square. Uh, it's pretty critical because the clearances at the edges from the door are not that great. Now you can see the door gap actually is varying a bit all the way up to the top on this side and that's because they didn't quite square up this frame. I assume the building was fairly square that because this was the first door I built. Now once you've got your door frame squared then you can plan on how you want to build your doors to fit the opening. Now I made mine, I believe it ended up being see quite a large gap. Watch it dog. Actually no that's not a gap that's just the uh, tin doesn't come quite up to the edge of this uh, frame here. You can see there's, there's actually a uh, piece of angle that uh, is meant to come up hard against this, uh, this uh, guide tubing. So let's go inside and look at the uh, other side. Okay so I didn't really use any great rule of thumb when I was making these things. Um, like I said, square up the frame. Uh, the tubing is not very heavy. I imagine that this door is probably only a few hundred pounds total. Um, I set it up such that I could have counterweights attached at the corner. The center is the uh, lifting point, which is nothing more than a, uh, uh, I believe it's a 600 pound or maybe it's a 400 pound hoist that I picked up from Princess Auto, the local equivalent of Harbor Freight. And uh, how the 
door works is obviously it pivots in the middle um, outwards and pivots at the top outwards as well. Uh, at the bottom, a little bit off the ground here, I've got tr this, uh, this track here. And you can see that track like that. And this track is nothing more than 1x2 tubing that I cut a slot into. And a standard garage door wheel rides in that slot. Now I would recommend steel wheels because on my other door I used plastic wheels and they broke. But the steel wheels don't seem to be much better because this one is actually broken here. So uh, in any case. Um... Probably there, you know, like there's no point in giving you dimensions because uh, it's going to vary to your situation here. Okay, so the uh, only critical thing that I would recommend you do is that when you set up the uh, height of the uh, top piece versus the height of the bottom piece, you want the height of the top piece from the top to the middle hinge to be a smaller dimension than the dimension of the bottom piece from that hinge the pivot point down here where the uh, roller wheel is. And the reason why you want that is you want the top piece to go horizontal before the bottom piece because if the bottom piece goes horizontal first then the only way you're going to be able to open it or to close it is to actually physically pull it back down because it'll kind of lock itself in that position if it goes past that point. Um, now the distance between these uh, posts here is about 34 inches if I would have been smarter, I would have chosen a multiple of, uh, you know, a standard lumber dimension like 32 inches, uh, you know, double 16, because it would have worked better with the roofing panels that uh, I used to uh, sheet the door. As it was, I've got some spots. I can't see one readily. Oh, yeah, here's a spot right here where uh, it doesn't coincide with a, uh, with a, uh, a cross piece and... Uh, and it kind of tends to rattle a bit. I got to pop some rivets into them, and then it'll probably hold a lot tighter. Um, apart from that, that's probably the only real special things about this thing. It's actually not that difficult to make. I was intimidated by it when I made mine, but uh, it's really just two square frames made on a flat surface. You know, I rigid or I rigorously checked my cross dimensions from point to point. And from there to you know the lower dimension, made sure that they were consistent, so it was absolutely square. I did it on a very flat surface, and I actually even leveled it with a level, you know, and uh, and uh, everything worked out fine. Uh, one unusual thing you'll notice is that the uh, I've got actually a board on the bottom, and uh, what that was for was I do eventually plan on concreting the floor of this shop, and because of that, the height of this shop is actually gonna or the height of the shop floor in here is probably gonna change so if I put it steel I would actually have to remake the bottom part of the door to uh, to uh, compensate for that but with a uh, 2 by 6 uh, pressure treated board there and a seal on the bottom I uh, I can actually just cut a new board to compensate for any distance as well it helps because this uh, the concrete perimeter foundation here actually isn't that level, so I was actually able to cut the board such that it <coughs> followed the terrain. Now, one thing worth noting about this is on the outer edge here, I've actually got a uh, piece of, uh, it's actually just flat strapping, it's not even angle iron, that I welded to it. And that is meant to keep the door from pushing inwards, and what it does is it rides up against the outer edge of this uh, this rail, when I pull it close, it latches into here and it holds it tight against there. Now, I originally intended for there to be weather stripping, but I actually miscalculated all my dimensions. And, uh, and, uh, and there isn't room for weather stripping here. It would cause binding. I have the same problem with the two pieces that sandwich here. That's actually quite a small amount, and I have to get some very thin weather stripping to go in there. Um, if I was going to do redo the sheeting on the top, I actually was planning on doing this. I was going to, first of all, weld a cross piece about halfway down on this top piece. And then I was going to redo the top section of, uh, of the door with uh, the translucent uh, roofing panels. or like a kind of a plastic skylight sheeting. And then I was going to bring down the... Uh, the door panel or the door sheeting so it actually overlapped slightly with this piece and that would have done two things 
wouldn't eliminate greatly eliminate the need for weather stripping kind of weatherproof it a bit and it would also mean that I could leave this door open in the winter or in the rain and it would act kind of like a cabana almost as it sits right now the water drips off the top runs down and actually runs down the inside of that door so that would be something I would change and I probably will try and change this year um, if you're curious what I meant about that spacing that was too tight between uh, that edge here and here you can actually see it right here there's the, uh, the pivot and there's the edge of that uh, that piece of you know flat bar that I welded to the edge and uh, if that dis that distance shouldn't be you know any greater than the distance or shouldn't be uh, any less than the distance from here to where the wheel would ride on actually this edge here you got to kind of calculate it out and measure it out for yourself I'm not explaining it very well but I hope you get the idea um, one thing I would really want to change is well first off there's no safety mechanism if that cable breaks up there the door will drop if it doesn't jam first now the door doesn't operate that well in the track because this isn't proper garage door tracking and if I would have uh, been able to find a source you know a cheap source I would have bought proper garage door tracking but you do have to bear in mind that with a wider door or a greater wind load this track is actually going to have a fair bit of force pushing on it so uh, eh, buyer beware kind of thing I have made a provision for a safety uh, right now I've been using it like a rudimentary safety where I just drop a couple of you know uh, 3 8 bolts in these holes and I did mean to make a latching mechanism that would catch on the edge of that uh, that roller but uh, I haven't gotten around to it the thing hasn't broken yet so I haven't worried too much about it this is just a flexible kind of a garage door bottom that I picked up. It actually was pretty expensive. I think you can get cheaper stuff. The stuff trapped uh, water I found it would freeze up and you'd open it and try and close it and you'd have a bit of a bear of a time. Um, that's really it. That's all there is to it. It's been a long explanation, but hopefully it gives you some ideas.